Hey, I'm Mead. I am a drawing and painting professor uh, here back with another critique. And um, this one's interesting because we have basically a finished piece that's really, really good. And, um, you know, sometimes you wind up with a finished piece that's good and you're still not satisfied with it. And so that's the sort of topic for today. So um, get out a sketchbook or a tablet or whatever and paint and draw along take some notes, whatever you need to do. Um, so basically the question is here is, you know, we've got this like really awesome piece and um, still unsatisfying. The, the question that this person um, had was basically like, I don't know what to do with the color, the value, or the composition. So, um, you know, maybe uh, there's not focus for some reason. Um, maybe something's wrong with it. I think one of the ideas that was thrown out was just to like um, discard the hydroponic room. The uh, The basic idea of this is that um, this person's, you know, using substances to deal with the loneliness of space. <laughs> and I think it's just a great subject um, and a good story. So that's the story, right? Um, so everything needs to come down to that story. Um, one of the ideas was, was to basically just eliminate that green room, right, to focus the story. So um, what we can do is, uh, you know, just paint it right out, right? We can just say, like, um, you know, get a big brush and, you know, take eye drop the average value around it and just, like, eliminate it, you know? Like, what is this going to look like without this back there, right? It's obviously going to remove all of the green highlights on everything. So, I mean, yeah, like this is totally an option. Um, it changes the lighting situation, definitely. Um, and I mean, one of the things that we do here is um, zoom out, right, and see what it does. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, this, this could work, you know, in terms of focusing the composition towards this one story. Um, you know, it, it simplifies it and, and it eliminates some of the depth of the idea, right? But it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's got potential, right? Um, you know, to bring in the green light source back, um, we could take this green that we have in the background um, let's zoom in here again be sure we get the correct green good average green and we could put that um, into this little box here as if this were a uh, a light on the wall and you know that could then bounce onto the wall and create our lighting effect that we like that actually would you know this is a potential solution right But instead of that green room, you just have a green light. And then that would actually kind of explain a lot of the lighting that's going on um, uh, elsewhere in the composition, right? Um, so if you wanted to minimize it, I would suggest going in this direction, right? Um, that would totally work. And then, you know, that would also take this, this light and start to brighten up, like, this whole area. Um, Actually, painted as a background. That was dumb. No. Okay, let me open up another version of this thing and uh, put it in here.
Now we have our new background. Okay, so now we can go back to our basic image. All right. So, um, you know, this is an option. Um, this, you know, painting on the correct layer now will put some light coming down onto this area. And up here, we'll just get this whole kind of like diffuse light thing going on. Probably show up down here too, on the inside of this in, in a couple of places. So this will kind of like change the color um, relationships that we've got. And, you know, this has potential. I mean, it's maybe not like the awesomest solution, but it is a solution, right? It's, you know, it will give us like reflection over here and, you know, highlight some of the color here on the table. Probably get more, more color on the figure. And we'll, you know, probably change the way that this whole figure works and the whole value scheme of the figure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, you could do it like this. Like, and I, and I would suggest that this, generally speaking, would be the way that you would go about it, right? Um, might get more highlights under here. So that actually would also like do some stuff to the histogram and brighten up the room a little. Um, you know, that's really quick and dirty, right? You would have to spend time like really smoothing it out. I don't know that that's necessarily the way to go for it, um, but it could be, right? Like, it's a potential solution. I think this room that you've done in terms of the design is really interesting. So, you know, I think in some sense it's worth keeping and I think you can do some stuff with the value, right? Like if we look at the um, just black and white image um, and and we turn on some uh, another layer for value, right? Like if we look at the white that we can produce, right? And the uh, full black that we could get, right? Like we're kind of even in the darks, we're pretty far from the full black, right? Even here where it's like a black lid, it's pretty far. Um, if we went to like 90% roughly, like that's about where we are. And that's like, that's pretty good because um, if we go to full black and full white, like we won't see color and that's a problem. Um, so if we eye drop some places, right, um, around in the in the background, we'll start to see some issues. Right, because we'll look and we're getting about 30% there, you know, in the highlights we're getting about 20%, right? We're getting like 50%, 40% up here, right? Um, here we're getting 30, close to 50 here. Um, here on this highlight, you know, we're about 60%. You know, this could probably, this is around 50%. So what's happening, I think, is that um, you have room to maneuver in terms of the value range um, to potentially bump things up and to make use of the value range while maintaining this um, uh, this feel that you have. So one of the things that you could do is up here uh, in this area. You know, this is supposed to be a light source, right? And of course, you want it to be dim, but right now it's at the it's at um, it's at the forty percent. So what if we swung it up to ninety percent? And we just bump that up real far. This is changing the shape of it too, which is probably not that good. Um, 
But if it is bright like this, it'll be, it'll kind of change some stuff anyway, right? It'll seem bigger than it is. Now, here's an interesting trick um, that I thought of doing of like duping this layer um, and uh, uh, changing the blend mode to like a color blend mode and then um, putting that on top and just seeing like without changing the color if we just paint in the black and white areas like what's that going to do to the emphasis right so um, you know that already is changing our read right so this has got the potential to bring some more um, some more color in now if we uh, have this as a light source, right? And this, you know, is getting hit by that light source. You know, now we have a huge distance, right? We need to brighten this up significantly. So we need to swing this at least to about 50%, right? So probably on up here, we're going to use our, you know, hard edge brush at the top, right? Because we want to we want to preserve this edge a little bit. Actually, I'd probably just use it the whole time. I was going to suggest maybe a soft edge at the bottom, but, you know, it's sci-fi. It's all going to be hard edges, right? So that's kind of looking like it's getting light on it. Um, I think it should probably go brighter if we're going that bright with the light source right here. I mean, what we don't want to do is pull this out of the middle um, the mood that we're getting, you know, and the mood is getting created because it's all like very low value, right? It's very dark. Okay. So we turn that back on. Now we're changing things like in a big way, right? It's like now we're getting the feel to be a little bit different because we're bringing in the highlights. So what I'm trying to suggest is that if we flip-flop the value range and make this foreground have some brighter elements, it will stop competing. It'll compete with the background, and then in this in this back room, we can bump the value down, and um, then they'll stop competing with each other. Um, so we turn that off. So now we have to take this and like um, like that's gonna be two. So we go back down, I think, to the 50 right here. We want some light to spill in here, but we don't want it to be like super, super bright. So we'll have to just play around with like what feels right in here. Because it cannot be as bright as that um, bit up at the top. And we want it to be like, we want it to have like a certain amount of variation right because it's light spilling down from there and it's going to have like an edge and we're going to have to like blend it between the two here i don't want to like lose this edge that you've done right or kill all the all of the detail and the linearity okay so now we're getting that to, to have some light on it. I think we can still go brighter, um, just a tad brighter. We still don't want it to compete, right? It's because it's we're further away from the light source. We shouldn't go as bright. Cool. And then if we want to, we can uh, we can run down that same tone and run that into here a little bit. Maybe we're getting little bits of light here. Just real faint. It's kind of spilling down. And then maybe it's like, maybe it's hitting the top of this chair in a couple of spots. 
and then um, definitely it's going to hit this hair, right? So here we probably need to like zoom in a little bit and uh, you know see how this might change the hair and the shadow on the hair. So like because of our proximity, I think we're going to have to use this value that you've got here in the hair um, up here. Get a little sheen in the hair. Maybe this is probably too bright. Maybe not. So what I'm going to do is knock down this value because we're going to have a primary and a secondary light source. Then I'm going to pull this dark value over here. And then that's going to interact more. So we're switching primary and secondary light sources, basically. So what's kind of happening here? And we're going to get this probably on this back edge of the hair here. And it's going to turn the plane at a certain point. color in <laughs> that's kind of funny we're getting like super glow glowy hair now right we're gonna change that right because we'll, we'll at the end we need to do like color edits so um, yeah it's getting a little bit funky right because of the way that um, color will come in we'll, uh, we'll we'll knock that color down later right what we're mainly looking for is is this value right so we're changing that, that light source situation. So on top of here, what we can do is we can uh, then take our color that we need and knock this down, right? So that we're not like breaking our color range. So we do want some of the color to come in, but only in that highlight, right? not on the shadows. There. Cool. Now what we do is we zoom out and we see how that's changing, right? So we go back to our original and see what we're doing. Okay. we don't want to do we don't want to include this layer or this layer right I'm gonna move these all the way to the bottom okay so we're gonna ignore that top layer Maybe not. Okay. All right. So we're getting there, I think. Um, now what we need to do, I think in a big way, is um, you know, work into the figure because now we're because we're switching like primary and secondary light sources okay so um, just working black and white still we're gonna have to take some uh, some shadow tones like from here and we're gonna have to start to redo what planes are in light and what planes are in shadow right and I just started painting in the background which was a mistake All right, cool. So um, now that I'm painting on the proper area, 
So this plane is going to be in shadow. We're going to get um, light probably falling on the deltoid here, and we're going to push this into shadow. Um, we're going to get um, a little bit on the, the bicep here, and we're going to probably fall into shadow towards the forearm. Uh, the top of the forearm will get some light, um, fading down less as we go down the forearm. Um, it's going to throw this all into shadow. This is going to be in shadow. We're going to pick up the clavicles, except for where we're getting a cast shadow from the neck. So we're probably going to get some there. And we're going to brighten up the highlights here in a bit too. We're going to get a lot of shadow here, right? For this is all going to be in shadow from the head. We're getting a plane shift here. We're still going to catch that like rim lighting on the, the left there. But we're not going to have it here where the arm is. We're going to catch um, some light on the arm here. Uh, more on the arm here than on the other side, right? But still, most of this is going to be in shadow. Especially by the time we get down here, we're getting pretty far. And this is going to be in deeper shadow where we transition into the hands. Um, not sure what happened with this hand. That got a little funky. Um, we'll just shift the plane there. Kind of make that happen. This is probably going to be pretty dark. Um, we're going to get pretty dark under the leg here. And we're going to get extremely dark under here. Right? I think we're going to get our dark like up here down in this area and under the figure. I think we're getting our 90. This is, this is like a total absence of light situation. So we're going to make that dark. See what this color is going to do, right? So yeah, that's kind of making it streaky, right? But that's OK. So now we're bringing focus to this figure just through contrast. Um, you know, turn off what we've been doing, and we're we're changing it a, a fair a fair amount, right? Um, yeah. So the. Uh, Next thing is to think about how the planes are going to shift. Like, um, we're going to get, you know, total shadow down here too, right? I mean, there's stuff you could think about. Like, maybe you want to change the pose. I don't know. Maybe not. Right? Like, you could. Like, I think there's something to be said, maybe, for changing the pose. Because um, it looks like she's meditating. Doesn't really look, like, super depressed about anything. Um, here we're going to go down, basically down the shin bone, um, and snag light just on the calf here, I think. Um, and maybe, like, push this back a little kind of create a more interesting shape. This is largely probably going to be in shadow, maybe. Maybe we'll get a little bit here, but you know, I think we're going to get the light blocked off on most of this leg because of um, what's going on with the, uh, the light source, because it's coming from behind, right? So we're not going to see a lot of that. We've got a plane shift here, right? So the 
this is going to have to get pushed down into shadow down here, right? Um, we're pretty much like far away from the light source here, so we can probably do a safely do a plane shift here and change most of the light patterns here. Work on creating like a shadow core area. Bump it down even potentially. Okay. Then we haven't really done much to this leg, so we're probably gonna run the same down the down the shin bone here, right? And then probably pull some highlights in up here. Um, you know, and then we're gonna borrow this tone that's at an 80%, so that's pretty bright. Um, we're gonna have to bring that up to the shoulder and onto this plane of the trapezius muscle and bring it over here too. Might need to lighten up in the shoulder some, maybe a little here. Um, you know, if we're getting the legs that bright, the arm's gonna be semi-bright probably not that bright, probably more like that. Okay, a little zoom out again. Check how that's kind of working with the color. I mean, it's starting to get there. We're starting to get some shadows. I think we could probably be more brave with the shadows. Like, you know, just say like this whole area is kind of in shadow. So like take this shadow plane down and put most of this in, in the same shadow. By flattening this out, we're gonna gain something Hopefully. Mm -hmm. It's looking a little better. We need to knock this down here and that down there because we're kind of getting the wrong emphasis, I think. We probably need to also push the value down here. Oops, that was too much. Maybe to like here. We're getting too much um, too much light, too much reflected light in that. It's too bright, right? We can bump that all down. Okay, now we're getting like to an interesting spot because this is starting to feel like the light is palpable, like like you can feel the light in a way. Um, and I like light to feel like that personally. I like to to know that the light is an entity in the in the piece, right? And the the light is a character almost. You know? Like the light is telling a lot of the story. Even if we're losing some of the detail, like we can bring it back later, right? Yeah. So now I think it's time to go in into this um, back room and start to kill um, some of the highlights there. Okay. So what we do um, since we're working digitally is we, um, I dropped this highlight back here. So that is a 13%, right? We eye drop here, and it's at, you know, <laughs> 11. So they're competing with each other, right? Because they're the same. So um, what we will do is we will knock those down by at least 10%, um, and as much as like as much as possible, basically, we'll knock these down. So we will swing this down to like, uh, like 20%, maybe even less, and then we'll paint over it and uh, 
see what we can do there. I'm knocking this way down. Like, see, it still looks bright. You know, that's the crazy thing about it is like, we've done a 10% difference and it still looks bright. So I think we have room to go even darker with it and still have it look like a light source in there. So then we zoom out and we check it and check it check it with the color on. Still looking light sourcey, right? But it's not competing as much. Right? So we've just de-emphasized that. So we could probably push it even further because and just like really embrace that idea, right? So, you know, because it's we're working in like a graphic painting style, like this is about 30%. So we could say like, we could even try a 50 and see what 50% looks like. Does 50% look like a light source? I would say no. 50% does not look like a light source. Um, so let's go to 60 or 40% rather. Lift it up again. Maybe. I think this might do it. Yeah. That does it. So now we've kind of hit our right, our range that we need for this room. So now what we need to do is go in here and be sure that these things are getting knocked down also. Right? And we might even be able to lower those down to like 55 even. What's funny is like this is just a superly, super like annoyingly logical way to do this. But when we apply the logic that can get us out of stuff that we've done, like problems that we've created instinctually. So like we can do that on this display here too. Maybe knock this display down a notch. Okay. Check our color. All right. You know, we're getting there, right? I think we can change our overall, like, color saturation thing later. But um, we can probably knock, um, like, wh what we need to do is not contrast down, right? So we're kind of like, basically the idea is bring stuff to the middle, right? So if this, is, if this black is like, you know, 24, we raise it to like 30 and see what lightning that does. By reducing a little bit of contrast within this area, right? Still kind of bright, 
um, what we could do is take this segment and darken it some. this bit we could take the average value of this and darken it some the nice thing about working with um, a uh, graphic painting style like this is that you don't need um, big value distinctions to make them work it can be very subtle, you know. Um, and actually, we probably need to lift that back there because that's that's a bright room. Maybe even that. Check our color, right? You know, the color is too saturated. So, I mean, I think what the value is getting there, I think the color is what's kind of messing with us um, in terms of like what's competing now um, because the value is not really competing, right? Like if we, if we zoom way out, right? Like we're getting to the point where we know that this is what our area of focus is gonna be on. Um, another thing we could do is we could add that other layer and just like see what covering up uh, some of the value would do for us just as an overall thing. And then, I mean, you know, that's a potential solution too, is just to like, now we've pushed everything in there into a middle value range, right? So value-wise, this area, we've lost a lot of like detail, but um, it's not competing with our story that we're trying to tell up front. Um, the other thing too is we need, we need to work into the couch up front, I think. You know, like we didn't, we didn't touch the couch. So like we're gonna need to take like maybe this value and see what that does on the couch, right? We're trying to get the, the couch to come out a little. We should be getting a fair amount of light on the top of this couch, kind of transitioning down around the edge here. Maybe we can get some over here. Sneak that in. Right? Not sure that's bright enough. I think it might need to be a little brighter. Um, something more like that might work better. So that we're getting like some actual stuff happening. And then because we're gonna get this rim lighting effect through here, like we probably do want to pull some glow in there. Check with our color overlay. Definitely better. Um, now we have this opportunity to um, tell the story with the table, right? Because um, that's kind of another big element of the uh, the storytelling here. Is uh, you know because now we have a very clear light source, right? And it's and it's shiny. So we need to take our our bright that's up here, which is like 90%, knock it down 5%, and then reflect it down here, right? 
we're going to get these reflections from the stuff that's going on up there. And we're probably not going to get the bright reflections from that room, so we're going to knock down a lot of that. but we might still get some over here. We'll get some like right here. Um, we'll get um, definitely some brighter areas in here. Uh, not like super bright though. Um, I think we can go brighter. I like this little idea of having um, a cloth cover for the for the table and we can get some super darks under here, right? And we'll also get some super darks under here. Um, maybe even like the 5% dark under here. Because this is our most foreground element, right? And we're not getting really any light on this plane. So adding a little bit of dark here would, would I think, help a fair amount. Cool. Color overlay. Right. Now we're getting to where we're getting some, like, some emphasis and some focus in on what's going on here. So I think we can put some cast shadow emphasis down here into this ashtray. We could probably even bring some high some shiny highlights into it right around here, maybe. Maybe even like sneak a highlight into the bowl itself and go back in clean it up some with a little bit of a dark. Um, oh, we have more pixels to work with, cool. So what I'm working on is trying to get this like highlight to show up here proper as the rim of the bowl. Kind of nitpicking, right? Might be silly to nitpick like this at this point, but we're trying to do some do some visual storytelling here now too, right? So here we can bump up this, get a good cast shadow on the ground there, here. Now we can draw em emphasis here. So we have no idea like what this powder is. It could be like medicinal herbs, ground up. And then we probably want to bring some highlights onto it, right? So we've got that highlight running here. It could probably run on here too. And we'll have some primary light source stuff going on here also. And then with this stuff, we can give it two sides and give it a shadow. 
so that it is lit by the primary light source. Same thing here. Then things get more interesting, right? So when I get back to that visual storytelling aspect and we do some highlighting like that. Okay. Test our color overlay. Yeah, I mean, we're getting there, I think, with keeping that broom, but, um, you know, not killing what we're doing with the rest of, of the whole lighting scheme. Um, so we've gone from, basically we've gone from there to there. Right. Okay, so we're making some big changes at this point. Um, you know, now I think it's time to like play into. You know, we can we can do this basically forever. Like you can go into like. Now we have primary light source stuff on this, on this plant, um, that we didn't have before. So we're gonna get like some shadows on this plant. some lights on this plant so that kind of is going to change that um, but yeah we're getting like to the sufficiently like moody aspect of it right we can get some more primary light source on this too on this whole table generally speaking get some stuff on the pill bottles get some more primary light source here and here maybe kind of just knock this around a little bit maybe get more here just sometimes it's like you get into the details and you forget that, like this is one big table plane thing right and you just need to treat it like that you know She's kind of creating a shadow on the table, so we need to make sure to create that there. Definite improvement, I think. Um, then color, right? So, you know, we've probably, you know, totally screwed up a lot of the color but now we have more, we have like a lot of color opportunities, right? So now I have this like middle value color um, that we can go in for this, for the rim lighting effects, right? Get those glowing back in over here, right? Um, we can even snag those like on door frames and things. We can get that kind of like glowing and reflections down here too. You know, any place there's shadow, like there's opportunity to sneak color into the shadows. So, you know, we think of like lights having color most of the time, but really it's the shadows that's gonna get all the color, um, you know? And uh, I think that that's like fun and really cool. So like we have this color, which is ni which is a nice color, and we can probably bump that down, you know, because we have a deep value, but we like that color. So that color, but down here, right? So we can work into the the shadows of this thing and bring these colors reflecting back into the couch, right, in the shadows, on the edge of this shadow, because it can bounce both directions, right, light just bounces around all over the place, and then we can take, like, this, um, this couch color, brighten it, lighten it, and sneak that into our reflected light, right, 
Maybe that got too bright. But we can do that, right? Do it over here too. Um, you know, we can get that into the figure also in the dark sides here. We can also take this and work it into the reflected light too because we're getting a lot of reflected light there. But knock it down. Um, we also want this like purplish color to um, this pinkish purplish thing. And we probably want to warm it up a little bit. We want that to get into like these half tones too, right? I think. Because we want it to have color, you know? We want to put that pink tone in back into the lights, right? So that it's not. And then here, like we want that pink tone to overpower the the green, right? Because that green's coming from that other room. And where we're in shadow, that green can can emerge, but where we're in light, we want that pink to come out. Okay. Then we need that on the couch too. Right? Here we're going to have them fight each other, the pink and green. You know, and then we're going to sneak that into the table also. This is where stuff gets fun, I think. And then we've got this blue, like this particular blue coming from the planet um, is a really nice one. Um, but I think we need just like a darker version of that to go in the figure itself. Um, see how far off we are from here. Actually, not that far off in hue. We could change it. Um, but I think largely this is the blue that we want inside this figure, right? So I just want to like take the time to you know, flatten that color out. Um, maybe darken it and cool it down. for some of the areas. We need some of that pink back. The shape is really what's key, right? It's not necessarily like the modeling of value within the shape all the time. We want this to kind of fade away, be real dark down here, so that we get that contrast range. We can lose some edges down here too. Pull in more contrast if we need to, where we're just not getting light. And Play it back and forth. Then we need to get this blue reflected onto the leg here. Play around with it more. Alrighty. And I think, um, you know, we haven't worked really into the environment over on the left. And I think there's still opportunities to do that. There's still opportunities to mess with um, that room in the background 
we can go back to that idea of not having that room in the background. But I think when we zoom out on it like this, I think we've got this idea that, you know, our way to improve this is to like simplify this figure, change the primary light source um, to this one like right above her head, and then give all of this contrast there. Like it's still depressing. I think it's still interesting um, uh, in this sense. And I think what we've done is we've just kind of flip flopped our main uh, our main idea here is that we've gone from you know this where our primary light source is behind her right to this you know where we've like shifted it instead you know and even turning off this black and white layer I think helps a little bit too now there's still more to do with her I think we didn't touch the face I don't want to leave that undone right like the face is too bright here I think so what we want to do is take some of this bounce light and that's what's going to be uh, effective in the face okay um, so here we've got this like pink color that's going to bounce up into the chin and onto the neck right so in the shadows we're going to get a lot of this blue we're going to get this pink though is what's going to happen is what's going to bounce into the uh, into the neck I mean it's going to be like subtle right we're going to change the cheekbone shape a little bit get it into the cheekbones we're going to take this and put that into shadow up here then we're going to take this pink and throw it up here under the eye get some of that there and knock it down right uh, we may need some of this blue in the skin also might need some of the hair shadow value to block in that plane to make it a little bit darker knock down the reflected light there the upper lips gonna get that value under the lip there and we're going to get darker above it right and we're going to blend it and make it more subtle so it's not like too glaringly obvious we might lose a little bit of that line there Knock it down, knock it down. Right. And now we're integrating a little bit better. Um, I mean, it's basically a bad paint job. Changed too many of the shapes, I think. We can play around with it. You know. This is your original, like, delineation line there. So we preserve that, right? There, that's better, right? Get that tone up into the eyelid a little, but not that much. You know, and then I think we do need to take this green and knock down the rim light into a deeper value, but it can still be a, a saturated green. Right? And then we can lose it completely here. So it's getting occluded by that shadow. There. You know, I think from here you get the idea, right? Um,
So again, I think the main thing here, you know, is zooming out and working on these big changes, right? And then to switch the light source and see what opportunities you have for, for changing it, you know? And I have no idea how much you spent on this thing. It could have been a 20 minute sketch, I don't know. So I just spent another hour like kind of going over this. So um, I hope this helps and I hope this kind of like, you know, um, helps extend the sort of thought process that everybody has. Cause you know, when you work like this, you do get lost sometimes and you forget that maybe you need to go back to like some basic ideas, you know, like atmospheric perspective, like even in a, in a low depth thing, like I can do like high contrast in front, low contrast in back, and that can determine my emphasis. Right. And, um, and that can help with the, with the storytelling as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you are watching this and you want to be guaranteed a critique every month, I have a Patreon and you can support me through that. Thank you for watching. <laughs>